Okay, today we're going to be looking at that plus minus connection, trying to figure out how do addition and subtraction relate? Is there an easier way to rewrite a problem? So I'd like you to open up your learning evidence journal and I want you to think about these questions and record your responses in them. So what are some ways you might solve the problem 5 plus negative 2? In the past few lessons, we've talked about solving problems with a number line, with chip models, and you may have some other tools up your sleeve. Go ahead and see if you can record a few different ways to solve that problem. Also, can you rewrite 5 plus negative 2 as a subtraction problem? Right now, it's an addition problem. Can you write a subtraction problem that's going to be equivalent to that? What are some ways you might solve the problem 5 minus negative 2? Okay. Again, try to come up with multiple methods. Now, can you rewrite 5 minus negative 2 as an addition problem? So I want you to pause this video and really spend some time writing some good answers, good reflections to these four questions. We'll come back to these questions at the end. So we're looking at the plus minus connection today. And the cardinal rule is this, to subtract an integer, add its opposite. That means if you want to subtract a negative, add a positive. If you want to subtract a positive, add a negative. Same rule applies to addition. If you want to add a, an integer, you can just subtract its opposite. You might not use this quite as frequently, but sometimes it comes in handy too. So I would like you to work out several examples and just see if you can write each problem as an equivalent problem using the opposite operation and then try to solve it. So the first one is this 4 minus negative 15. I'm going to talk you through this one. So this is subtracting a negative number, you have 4 minus negative 15. So we can change this to adding the opposite of negative 15. The opposite of negative 15 is 15. So you can rewrite that as 4 plus 15. Okay, with that in mind, try to rewrite the next three problems and then solve. B, negative 3 minus 8. C, negative 6 minus negative 12. D, 7 plus negative 3. So again, pause the video, try to rewrite these as an opposite operation problem, and then go ahead and solve them. Okay, if you wrote A, 4 plus 15, we did that one together, B, negative 3 plus negative 8. C was negative 6 plus 12. And D, 7 minus 3. You rewrote them correctly. And then just check to see if you got the answers right as well. You should have 19, negative 11, 6, and then 4. All right, to me, the most useful application of this is whenever you see minus minus, you can just change it to plus. That is so convenient. It just makes some problems that look complicated become so much easier. In fact, any of these four examples work that I showed you below. All right, so go back to those questions to consider. See if you agree with your original responses. Tweak them if needed. And we'll keep on.